Hi everyone, my name is Scott. Welcome to Planes, Trains, Everything and welcome to London Victoria Coach Station. The longest unbroken coach journey I've ever done was 1,509 miles. That was between Port Hedland in Western Australia and Darwin in the Northern Territory. Tonight that's going to get smashed. I'm travelling with a company called Union of Coney and they operate the longest scheduled coach service out of the UK from London to Sofia in Bulgaria. 1,735 miles. Now they do say I have to be at the bus stop at least 60 minutes in advance, which sounds a bit excessive, but they're the ones that make the rules. And I've already been allocated a seat, number six. You don't get to pick and choose. And as far as I know, one, two, aisle, three, four, five, six. It's going to be an aisle seat up the front. It might even be the first of the passenger seats, because usually the first row is used by relief drivers, their bags and jackets. I was reading the terms and conditions and it says it is strictly forbidden to consume food or drinks on board the bus. I'm on it for 50 hours, hello, just watch me. Although they do say the bus does have a mini bar which serves tea, coffee, hot and cold soft drinks. I'm not sure about the hot soft drinks but I recognise the cold ones. And beer, yes beer on a coach. Welcome to Bulgaria. There is one catch however. The catch is, the beer is only served during scheduled service stops. Now there will be plenty of them because, let's face it, the journey is 50 hours long. The problem, however, is beer, coffee and tea are diuretics, which means if you drink them, you're going to need to go to the toilet. And one thing I want to try to avoid as much as possible is using the toilet on board the bus. Because every time I use one of these, drivers always seem to find roundabouts and I go flying. So, when we have a service stop, it's a priority thing. Do I go to the toilet? Do I get some food? Because after all, it's not allowed on the bus, is it? Or do I have a beer? One thing the uh, website doesn't tell you is all the intermediate stops are a timetable. I had to work it out for myself. The bus leaves at 7 p.m. tonight, and that's today, Monday. Arrives into Sofia on Wednesday night at 8.30 p.m. Sounds like a fantastic trip, doesn't it? Working backwards from that arrival time, I've worked out that the bus will be going through Paris, Rez, Metz, Karlsruhe, Stuttgart, Munich, Salzburg, Linz, Vienna, and after that the trail goes a bit cold. It might be an express service to Sofia. I guess we'll find out. I've never been to Bulgaria before, but I have been to Bulgaria before. I'll explain along the way. Right, let's get to the number two bus stop. It's not the main bus terminal, it's the other one, whatever it's called, because it's a right-hand drive vehicle, I believe. It'll be Bulgarian. And there we have it, parked over on the other side. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're not taking on passengers yet because the door's on the traffic side of the, uh, the bus. Well, it looks as if I was the first passenger on board, but that is because I arrived about one hour and 10 minutes before departure. I can't see where the bar is, and there's definitely no toilet on board.
Right, just remember, zone five. I'm always forgetting what zone, what level um, the bus is parked on. Yeah, that driver is an interesting character. He is Romanian, but he speaks Italian to people. And um, he smokes while he's driving, which I think is illegal. And he uses his mobile phone while driving. But I must say he's one, one seriously good driver because he can negotiate the narrow, busy streets of central London with one hand while holding the phone with the other. It's amazing what he can do. Right, it's a very mild evening. I'm gonna wait until departure and then I'm gonna head in and buy, buy some bottles of water. Buy some bottles of water and maybe get a snack or two. I've decided I'm going to survive this 50 hour coach journey by breaking it into little bite sized pieces. Bite size number one is from London to Calais. Bite size number two is from Calais to Paris. After that, I'm not quite sure because I don't know where we're having breaks. Um, in Paris, we will be at the Bercy bus station, which is something I absolutely hate. Fortunately, I don't think we have to get off the bus. That is a good thing. Um, and in fact, when we get to Paris, I was doing a little calculation, that is 25% of the journey done already, time-wise. So we're doing pretty good here. Right, as soon as we depart, I'm heading inside where it's warmer. This is nice, isn't it? Par mesure de sécurité, les passagers sont priés de ne pas laisser leur bagage sans surveillance et de les garder au prix de durant toute la traversée. Let's go inside. One day I'm going to pluck up enough courage and try and get into one of the driver's lounges on one of these ferries. But there's a guy there sort of guarding it like Fort Knox, so I can't get in. So I'll just have to pay £2.25 for a bottle of water, won't I? ticket which you have to scan to get into the driver's lounge. I might have to tailgate one of them then. Just kidding. Right, let's get some food. So far so good. For some reason on our coach there are 12 passengers and a girl was allocated the seat next to me. The bus is almost empty, and yet the system still books us two together. Maybe it was supposed to be fate, but it didn't happen that way. I moved across the aisle, two seats to myself. I think she's getting off at Paris, but I think we're gonna get a lot more passengers on there. Well, that's all passengers now called back to their vehicles. Um, we are not due into Paris until about 8 a.m. so I think I'm going to close my eyes for about six hours. I'm not going to sleep but at least I'll be able to recharge the batteries. I'll see you when we get to Paris. I thought I'd lost the bus. There it is.
can't complain about the stops, there's one every two hours. We're just outside of Paris. I didn't know what happened in Paris. I thought we were going to end up going to um, the Bercy bus station. Obviously not, we ended up in some other random part of Paris. This is a strange place to have a break, honestly. It's like a construction site. Another service stop, another construction site. This one's just outside of Metz. It's just gone midday, so I thought I'd get a proper lunch. I've got some orange juice and a baguette. I have noticed one thing though, and it brings back memories of when I traveled across Russia by train. If you sit long enough without moving, you become slightly constipated, and that's what's happening to me at the moment. I just thought I'd tell you and give you an update on my bowels. Yeah, no need to go to the toilet. What is it with these places? <laughs> and we've got the army over there as well. We're in safe hands here. I must say, I am impressed at the number of breaks we get. They're roughly every hour and a half to two hours, but I think that's because there's no toilet on board. Right, let's get on board. another comfort stop and another construction site. This is just outside of Zarbrücken. Unfortunately there are no toilets here and now I'd need one. McDonald's saved the day. Right, let's get out of Zarbrücken. made it to Stuttgart, 7 p.m. That marks about halfway time-wise. Oh, I'll tell you what, my backside and legs are getting sore. Uh, so whenever we get the opportunity to go out and stretch the legs, that's exactly what I'm doing. I was gonna go and use the toilet there, but of course they're charging 80 cents to get in. I didn't bring any cash with me. Oh well, I'll, I'll do it next time. Right, let's just wander around and get the blood circulating. Ooh.
haha -ha, and even another construction site look they're always building stuff uh, I was hoping to actually get something to eat for dinner because it is uh, almost 7 p.m. but uh, absolutely no shops open here so I'll have to wait for the next shell service station stop I'm just thinking I was here years ago I was actually I came here for a football match I must come back again and feature on YouTube one day because it is quite an interesting city another town another service break this time I had to get some something to munch on and some water we're about two hours out of Munich we're well past the halfway stage my backside's feeling a bit sore but apart from that enjoying it There's a bit of a pattern for me here. We're here at another shell garage uh, for another comfort break, but this time they're buying petrol as well. Uh, we didn't visit Munich. I guess if no one's getting off the coach at Munich and no one's scheduled to get on the coach at Munich, we don't stop at Munich. But we did stop at Salzburg and we're just outside of Linz now. And at this rate, we'll be hitting uh, Vienna a lot earlier than I expected. I thought we were gonna be there at about seven o'clock tomorrow morning. It's gonna be more like 4 a.m. I'm just wondering what time we're going to arrive into uh, Sofia because I thought it was going to be an 8, it does say actually an 8.30 arrival we we're way ahead of schedule oh and by the way I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt because it is absolutely sweltering in that bus these Bulgarians, uh, I don't think they can handle the cold very well it is roasting in that bus, it really is Four twenty a.m. and another service break. Uh, this time it's not a garage; it's actually a proper rest area for for truckers and for uh, buses. Um, we seem to have scuttled around Vienna. I was looking forward to seeing Vienna because I love Vienna. Now we've scuttled around the south side of it, and we're somewhere very close to the border with Slovakia. It is absolutely freezing, and I'm getting inside again. Another service station, another comfort stop. Formalities at the border took 35 minutes, which wasn't too bad. And I was thinking, I've never been to Serbia before, so it's a new country, but I've been here before. I was here when it was Yugoslavia, so I don't think that actually counts. So that's a brand new country chalked up today. Right, I'm gonna get some water. I was watching a guy just over there. He was selling sunglasses from the back of his car. So that's how things work in Serbia. Mm -hmm. I was just watching a guy selling sunglasses from the back of his car. Also, this is the second take to do this because I was just told off by a security guard for filming in the car park. I gotta watch Serbia.
12.20 p.m. and the good news is I've seen my first traffic sign pointing to Sofia. We should be there in around about eight hours. Oh boy, this is uh, one challenging journey. But I'm gonna go into the toilets here because we're having another break. And here we are in Sofia. What did I think of Union of Kony? Would I do this journey again? Well, in actual fact, no chance, absolutely no chance. I have not slept a wink on that. I've been up for about 56 hours since I last crawled out of my bed. I am so tired. The seats are also very uncomfortable for a journey of that duration. Uh, the, the leg room is about the same as Ryanair, which isn't much. They do have reclining seats. The back does actually recline, but the seat itself slides forward, reducing the amount of leg room you've got. Uh, there are no snacks, no tea and coffee, no hot or cold soft drinks. I was curious to see what a hot soft drink was, and no beer. And I said at the very start of this uh, video, I've been to Bulgaria before, but I haven't been to Bulgaria before. And that's because in, I think it was February 1991, I had a transit visa from Istanbul to Belgrade. I never got off the train. So I crossed the country, but I never set foot in it until now. Anyway, guys, thanks very much for coming along on this rather long journey. I appreciate your company, and I'll see you next time.